Okay. We know you have. Excellency Dr. William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya. Excellency Azalia Sumani, President of the Union of the Comoros and current Chairman of the African Union. Excellencies, Head of State, Government and Delegation. Excellency Antonio Guterres, United Nations Secretary General. Excellency Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Union Commission. Representatives of international organizations, financial institutions Ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observes. First and foremost, I would like to thank President William Ruto, the government and the people of Kenya for the exceptional hospitality accorded to us since our arrival in this hospitable and the green capital, Nairobi. The beautiful and natural environment in this country augurs well for the great success of our climate summit. The organization of this climate summit in such friendly conditions in just six months since the decision of the African Union summit last February is striking proof of the excellence of your leadership, dear friend William. I sincerely congratulate you. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, the recent report du Groupe international d'experts sur le changement climatique, GIEC, confirme nos craintes. L'Afrique, se réchauffe plus rapidement que le reste du monde. Si le phénomène n'est pas stoppé, le changement climatique continuera à avoir un impact gravement toxique sur la croissance des économies africaines. La, produ la productivité agricole a été réduite de 34% entre 1961 depuis 1961 en raison des changements climatiques plus que dans toute autre région d'où une pression insoutenable sur les systèmes alimentaires africains. Des pays africains sont ainsi confrontés à des charges et à des risques disproportionnés découlant des phénomènes météorologiques imprévisibles, notamment des sécheresses prolongées et des inondations dévastatrices à tous les niveaux. Des crises humanitaires massives provoquent des effets néfastes sur l'économie, la santé, l'éducation, la paix et la sécurité, ainsi que d'autres risques connaissent. À titre d'exemple, la saison 2022-2023, environ 18 millions de personnes ont été affectées par la sécheresse dans la seule Horn de l'Afrique. Le cyclone tropical Fred a touché plus de 1,2 million de personnes et a causé la mort de plus de 700 000. On estime également que entre 2019 et 2023, les dégâts en Afrique sont entre 20 et 35,5 milliards d'Américains. Cette liste lugubre n'est pas exhaustive. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, climate change has spared no sector. It is to be recalled that Africa has around 400 million who do not have access to clean drinking water and about 700 million do not have access to a very good uh, sanitation. And uh, this also indicates, experts indicate that there is a gap, a financing gap uh, of uh, 11 to 20 billion dollars. So we are obviously on the verge of seeing climate degradation. It is not the only factor. And uh, it would be wrong not to integrate this in our global analysis of the negative factors uh, 
including governance, which is at the very center. I do not want to yield to pessimism. And in the general, it is uh, however fortunate that in the table we have some beacons and uh, favorable indicators. I cannot help reminding that 600 million people do not have access to electricity and uh, 200 million of them do not have access uh, to clean uh, cooking and are exposed uh, to all respiratory problems and diseases due to smoke. And uh, because of climate change, uh, we have problems in our infrastructure and we need to develop a profitable infrastructure and spend at least 160 billion dollars per year indeed it is encouraging to note that the african governments have devoted about 3.5 percent of their gdp to the development of infrastructure over the past 20 years it is too little compared to some emerging countries. China and India, for example, devote 7.7 uh, .7 and 5.2% uh, of their GDP respectively in infrastructure. We can thus see in which direction efforts have to be made. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this summit affords us uh, an excellent opportunity to translate the climate ambitions of Africa into investment opportunities, to consolidate our voices on matters on burning issues of climate change, to prepare for the UN Climate Summit and for COP28 28 in the United Arab Emirates. At these meetings of global importance, Africa must, among other challenges, highlight uh, the worrying and sometimes tragic uh, situation in the Sahel, in the Horn of Africa, where droughts and uh, floods alternate. Uh, in the Congo River Basin, with dangerous uh, deforestation and the disastrous consequences of cyclones in Southern Africa and in the island states, it is urgent that Africa come to all these meetings with concrete proposals to be implemented without delay. I reiterate, I strongly reiterate uh, my call to come uh, to the next two meetings uh, with uh, precise proposals without drowning them in uh, literature and the usual litany on the imperative need for collective uh, justice uh, for Africa where responsibility is very limited in the pollution of the world with an inversely proportional share of the volume of global investment in the field of environment. This call for a restoration of justice for Africa would benefit from being supported by a real reform of the global financial architecture for which a high-level panel is rightly devoted at this summit. Obviously, this reform must resolutely focus on the financial organs and uh, structures, institutions which uh, structure the universe, which operate far from Africa. In this uh, desired reform, a question comes to mind, the weight of uh, the debt and the financing gap of the SDGs, Africa alone represented a need of $1.3 billion per year for sustainable development needs by 2030, while the financing needs for SDGs in the same period were $2.5 billion for financing developing countries. Everyone knows uh, that the public debt uh, stock uh, in sub-Saharan Africa at the end of 2023 was estimated at $1.1 trillion uh, uh, dollars out of 650 billion SDRs mobilized. Africa received only 33 billion, which is only 4.5%. In view of these staggering figures and many others, it is clear that there is no relevant global intervention in favor of Africa without a credible solution for the crippling debt challenge of Africa.
To aid the struggle, which include financing adaptation, $100 billion per year, Africa has galvanized its will in its uh, common position through a momentum unifying African voices in, uh, and this and it will be central point of our agenda in uh, G20 as soon as we join it. Uh, however, in this uh, struggle, Africa cannot just be satisfied with incantation. Just like for its independence, uh, it uh, is a challenge to rely on its own uh, personal efforts, uh, on its own genius, the quality and its virtues of bold, imaginative, uh, united and interdependent leadership. Uh, I wish you full success to our deliberations. I thank you very much. Asante sana.